So I've watched you on stage, and you focus mostly on controversial issues. You know, you, you hold, you pull no punches, as you said. Mm -hmm. You shoot. So why do you think that's so important in today's society? Just well, first of all, I kind of think that when the Bush era came in, and then the second one came in, you know, this whole notion of being politically correct is really a comedy killer. And so I think in some ways, when the nation turned so far to the right, then believe it or not, more people started coming to my shows because... You know, comedians, you may not think they're funny or like them, you don't have to go see their shows, but they should at least be allowed to really and truly say whatever they want because it's under the umbrella of comedy. Right. And thank goodness the First Amendment still exists mm -hmm. and everything I say is in fact protected under satire. And I say that after years of working with my incredible First Amendment attorney, Alan Isaacman, who famously won the cases, the case of Jerry Falwell versus Larry Flint, and so I'm not messing around when it comes right. to my First Amendment attorney. I got right. the guy. And so I've tried to educate myself very well on what is actionable and what isn't. And the truth of the matter is I think the comedians are, in a way, um, you know, they, they shine a light on things that are silly or maybe not comfortable, and they hold a mirror up to things and people and hopefully do it in an entertaining way. But I actually, if I can get all artistic on you for a second, I think it's a really, really important part of any society, that comedians be able to say whatever they truly think is funny. Well, you take a lot of heat, right? I mean, you're criticized constantly. Yeah, I'm criticized constantly, and yet I could never be criticized quite as much as I criticize others. That's right, I'm willing to jump higher and work harder at criticizing you than you are at me. So, I'm a so, fighter. So if people are criticized constantly, yeah. How, how do you deal with that? How do you handle that criticism? I handle criticism really, really poorly. I'm someone who can dish it out and not take it. And I'm also full of it. I um, read things online about myself and sob. I get angry. Sometimes I laugh. And the worst part is there's no rhyme or reason. Some days I'll think that something someone said about me that's heinous is funny. And then other days I'll just be completely reduced to tears. And that's how I know what it's like to be Oprah. But it's one of the ways I identify with Oprah. What is it about you that you're able to draw such a sense of self? Because, you know, you're very, you're very powerful presence. You're powerful on stage. Well, Where I, did it come from? Is it just from the dinner table? It's really from the dinner table. I am absolutely a 50-50 product of my mom and dad. You know, my dad, who passed away two years ago, was a very inherently naturally funny person. But he was the type of guy that could be funny on cue, meaning he could tell a joke. My mom, on the other hand, is hilarious and has no idea why. Mm -hmm. She just is. And so the two of them together, you know, are, are we're like the perfect, that's why I put them on my TV show, because they're like a TV, you could turn them on. And, um, and by the way, I actually get the um, inability to censor myself from them, because even though I had this Irish Catholic upbringing, um, you know, I have a theory that no one swears or uses the Lord's name in vain more than Catholics. And, uh, and my mom and dad, are con we're considered sort of normal middle class parents, and yet you, my mom to this day really can't seem to censor herself, and yet she gets mad at me when I don't. Right. And that was really a big part of my dad's charm, is he just kind of told it like it was, but he could get away with it. And that's why I really admire somebody like Don Rickles, because he has what I call the Rickles license to kill, where you know he's been doing it so long, and at his age, he can sort of say things that you know, only a handful of people can get away with. And those are people that I'm actually inspired by. I love Don Rickles, I love Howard Stern, I love Joan Rivers, Bill Maher, people that are fearless and, and are in trouble a lot. 